So welcome everyone uh, to We Are Endurance webinar series. I'm really excited that Jody Kahn is with us today. Jody <clears throat> is a member of our group and she is also a teacher, but she's been studying meditation and Reiki. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correct. And um, I think I'm going to hand this over to Jody and just, you know, Jody, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background in this. Sure. So during the day, during the school year, I teach high school. Um, so I spend my days. But, and I also am a, a Reiki practitioner, which if you're not familiar with that, then I can explain that at the end, what that actually is. Um, I started a meditation practice years ago, but it was a bumpy road because that's the way it, it sort of goes in the beginning. Um, and I've, I've stuck with it. And along the way, I've met different people who have you know, done different practices. And Hillary, now you're gonna try something um, that I've done. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, that's, and I, I have found that um, doing meditation as a practice has actually changed how I focus on a daily basis. Um, I'm able to sort of shift emotions and shift levels of tension, um, no matter what time of day or where I am. So, um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, I don't know, I know some of you, but I don't know all of you. So um, I don't know Joanne and I don't know Brad. So. Welcome, thank you. And hi, Stephen and Ray. Hi. So I'm just gonna start with, um, I'm gonna start with an overall explanation of meditation and we're gonna go through um, a general meditation that you can do anywhere. And then if we have time, I have one that's more of a leading guided meditation. Um, but I, I have more emphasis on the one that you can do on your own because you'll, most of the time be on your own. So if you're sitting in your, in your office and you're at your chair, your desk, you, know, you can shut your door, even if you can't shut your door, you can do a meditative practice during the day in the middle of your job, okay? So recently when the Olympics were on, I was watching the Olympics and I was watching different, you know, different um, athletic events. And I was watching, when I was watching the track, uh, I noticed that different athletes were doing different things before the race. So some of them were, some of them were actually sitting on the ground, um, looking straight down. Some had their eyes closed. Some were looking up to the sky, like looking up to the heavens. Um, some were pacing, but regardless of what they were doing, they were all trying to connect with themselves before and sort of awaken themselves. And that's actually meditation. Um, in their own, whatever way they chose to do it, that's what they were doing. And that's meditation because meditation is that mind-body connection. And however you can connect your mind and your body together as one and awaken yourself, that's a form of meditation. Um, we know that meditation affects your health and your well-being. And certainly in, in affecting your health and your well-being, it takes a, uh, a transformation to your whole life and everything that you do, okay? So the thing about meditation is there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, people have different ways of doing it. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. It's just, it's a practice. So like anything, it takes practice to do it. Um, so you could be sitting down, you could be lying down. You could be, some people do it while they're walking, although I don't recommend that because you don't wanna walk into anything. Um, but usually people are either sitting down or they're lying down. You can be sitting in a chair, a regular straight back chair in your office. You could be sitting on a cushion. It doesn't matter where you are. The only thing is that it's a discipline. So like sports, sports is a discipline, right? Um, you want to excel in something. You created a schedule for yourself. You created it as a form of a discipline. Um, the thing with sports is that we're very goal oriented. So it's always about beating my own time or where am I gonna place in the race? And very often it's not about just being in the race or doing the activity. There's always some sense of a goal that we have that's attributed to it. And the problem is with that 
is that you're atta attached to the outcome. And when you're attached to the outcome of the experience, you lose the clarity of the experience, which is kind of an odd thing because, because we're so goal oriented and that's our, we look to the end, what's the end game to actually try and remove that is very challenging to do. Um, but I think when all these athletes sit prior to their, whatever they're saying to themselves, um, they're positioning themselves for some sort of internal um, awakening and that's, that's pretty important to keep your mind clear, okay? Um, so it's a, meditation is a way to tap into the clarity. And that um, I noticed also that the commentators were saying, like different, during the, especially during the triathlons and the marathons, and they're getting towards the end and they were saying, so-and-so, wow, they look so calm. They look like they're just sort of in this move in this groove. And then they would say to somebody else, um, look at them, they look like they're struggling, it's really hard for them. And then we've all heard of the term, you know, I was in the zone, you know, like I was in the zone, I felt so comfortable, I was in the zone. And that's because you didn't really think about, for whatever that moment was, you weren't really thinking about the goal, you weren't thinking about the end game, you were actually just doing. And that's, that's really sort of where you wanna to get to, is not focusing so much on the goal, or focusing on the thing, but just giving yourself a sense of clarity so that you can just do, okay? Um, but when you're in that zone, have, has anyone has experienced the zone? Have you ever felt that way? Yeah, and do you, you felt clear. There's nothing else going, right? Like nothing else is going on. So you don't even see your surroundings. You're just, it's almost like you're floating through it, right? And that's the clarity. So people say some, they all say, I wanna learn how to meditate. I'm assuming many people are here because they wanna learn how to meditate. Has anybody meditated in the past? Anybody? Okay, and did you let, how long did it last? Are you still doing it? No, <laughs> no. So what got in your way, if I might ask? The world. <laughs> The world, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's what most people say. I'm too busy, right? I'm too busy to meditate. I don't have the time to do it. I can't just sit there and sit on a cushion and, you know, and take myself out of the world. Um, I don't have the time to do that. So they don't do it or they try and do it. And then they get frustrated because they're waiting for something to happen. I don't know if that's happened to people they're like, waiting for something to happen, but nothing happens. And so the nothing happening is that same expectation. You're expecting something to happen. And so you're focused on this expectation that never occurred without actually just letting things be. So um, meditation is a formal practice. And so in this formal practice, you need to let go of all expect expectations that you would have about it. And um, and that's, it's just, it's the practice. So if you feel like you're too busy to do it, think of it this way. We all exercise, we all work out, we train for a certain event. So how do we do that? We set a plan for ourselves, right? We set a schedule for ourselves. And so as part of that schedule, we box out a piece of time in our life so that that will fit in. So that we have, it's like a puzzle, right? And we put our life into these puzzle pieces and we try and fit it all into one thing. So meditation is part of your puzzle. So you set your alarm earlier, you pick a time during the day that's best for you and you block out however long you wanna do it for. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, if you have a lot of time on the weekends, half hour, you just, you block out your time because it's a practice and it's a discipline. And it takes work, you know? So when, when people who are new um, come into it, that's the first thing they say, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. I'm just sitting here and I have all these other things to do. And then their mind starts to wander. Did that happen? Where your mind starts to wander and you're thinking, oh wait, I have to go, shoot, I have to run this errand and I'm supposed to see so-and-so for lunch and what time is it? And then, oh, I forgot I have to do this, this, and this. And then your mind just goes, 
And then you say to yourself, wait, I'm not relaxed. I'm focused on all these things that I have to do. Something's not right here. So people who are, um, who are skilled, I suppose we can say we're skilled people in meditation, they'll tell you that, um, don't worry about that. Acknowledge it. If you, if you see your mind travels, acknowledge it. What's on your mind? Okay, that's on my mind. And then you just drop it and you go back. Now the question is, how do you do that? How do you just drop it and go back? And I'll explain that in a second. But, and that takes practice because we, we get so caught up in our thoughts that our thoughts lead us down these roads. I don't know about you, but I'll have one thought and the next thing I know, it's like, a, it's like branching out, it's like a tree and it's got all these roots and it starts going in all these different directions. So how can I possibly find the time to just sit and become clear if I've got all this stuff going on? Um, so, so it's always recommended that if something pops into your head, you just say, okay, oh uh, yeah, I have, so, okay. So say I, just, I was going to meditate right now. First thing that would pop into my head, I'd be like, oh, that's right. I have to meet Lorraine at like two. Am I going to get there on time? And then my mind starts to go towards that. And then I have to say, okay, that's right. Okay. And then I bring myself back. I got that. That's what I'm, fine. Move back. Um, because really you're always thinking my mind needs to be blank in order to meditate. I have to have this blank slate in my mind. It's supposed to be black, you know, just like dark and that's nothing's supposed to be going on in my mind. And that's can't be, that's just, it can't, it can't be. So you have to just recognize that you're going to, things are going to pop into your head. You're going to recognize them and you're just going to push them away because um, if your mind is actually blank, you're not being aware of anything. And you wanna be, awareness is part of the key too. You actually want to be aware because you wanna be aware of the mind-body connection. And so to have a blank mind is to have nothing. So you really want that awareness. Um, I don't know if anybody's used these, but there's a lot of guided meditation apps that are out there now. Some, some of them cost money now. When they first came out, they were free. But I think it's become a, um, People are using them more and more, so um, they're charging for them. And those are really good for a guided meditation to someone to take you through them. You know, they give you the nice music and someone talks you through it. Um, and that's, and that's um, very helpful. But the key is how do you learn to do it on your own when you don't have a guided meditation or your headphones in and you're plugged into all that? How can you do it if you're in a situation where you can't do that? I tend to, I'll use sometimes guided meditations at night if I can't fall asleep. You know, I do other things too, but I've used those to try and fall asleep. I can't use it in the middle of the day because I have to be aware of my surroundings. So how do you do it? So the first thing you would do is you, you set yourself a posture. And in setting yourself a posture, you're actually awakening um, yourself. And you're, so you're setting yourself a posture, you're awakening yourself and you just you just drop into your surroundings. So like drop into your seat so you can actually feel your seat. If you can put your feet on the ground and feel the ground, you're grounding yourself. So if you actually feel your weight on the seat, that's what we call dropping in, okay? Um, so you feel your body, you feel a sense of your awareness, how your body is set, how your body's feeling. And here's the key, you connect to your breath. The breath is the key to meditation. And so you set your posture, you set your seat, and then you set your breath. You can close your eyes or you can keep your eyes open. If you keep your eyes open or just focus on one thing that's not gonna distract, distract you, um, you can focus on the ground, focus on a wall, um, but just find something that's not gonna be distracted for you, but it's the breathing. So the focus on the breath, the breath keeps you in the present moment because whenever you get distracted, by a thought, you recognize the thought, and then you quickly say, come back to breath. And when you come back to breath, it regrounds you and you, you're focused on your breath. And that's what keeps you moving, it's clarity, okay? So it grounds you, it eliminates all those distractions. And so when you feel your body moving into some sort of a temptation, you connect back to breath. Have you ever heard people say to you when you're all stressed out, take a breath? 
right? Take a breath, breathe, because it's grounding. It grounds you. So do you want to give this a try? Okay, all right. So um, usually when people start a meditation, um, they'll, they'll use this um, chimes and they'll hit it once to start and they hit three times as the ending. So that'll be the start and ending. That's where you know the timing of it. So the first thing I'll ask you to do is take a seat, settle yourself in, feel yourself in your seat, close your eyes if you choose to, drop into your seat and feel your breath. Connect to breath. Connect to breath. You may feel that when you inhale, your abdomen inflates, and when you exhale, it retracts. Let the breath flow. Feel it in your body. Waves in and out. Like the ocean, waves in and out. And bring your attention there to the breath. Feel the full duration of your breath. Find comfort in this place and stay there. Waves in and out. Give your full attention to your breath. Your mind may drift off somewhere else. It may think and get carried away. It's okay. Just realize, oh, I need to get back to breath. This is all a part of meditation. You're not used to doing this. You just reconnect to breath. Waves in and out. When you notice your mind is not on your breath, notice what is on your mind. See if you can note that in your mind. Now connect to breath. Do not judge yourself when your mind wanders. This is all a discovery. When the mind wanders, don't pursue it or push it away. See it and go back to breath. Waves in and out. Don't pursue it or condemn it. Just reconnect to breath. Simply drop in on the moment. You're not trying to attain anything. Waves in and out. Rest in the moment. Just this moment. Just this breath, just this sitting here, just this. Start to reconnect to your body. Wiggle your fingers, move your feet. And when you're ready to open your eyes, you can do so.
Did you feel a difference, anyone? So, <clears throat> so Jody, mm -hmm. tell us how we could do this on our own. Just right. try to, I mean, is there, it was easy getting into it with you, but when we're on our own, how do we how do we do that? So even without my words, what, there was something I kept repeating, and that was connect to breath. So I was saying all the things that I just said prior, just putting them into this piece. But when you find your mind wandering, it's the, you just connect to breath. If you close your eyes five minutes from now and just said, I'm going to just take five minutes for myself. And you closed your eyes and you found your mind started to wander. You just say to yourself, connect to breath. I like the waves in and out because it reminds me of the, how water is very soothing. So I sort of try and think of my breath as the water going in and out. And even just doing that makes me like, you know, I start to get very calm just thinking about that in and out of a wave, it's telling, it's training yourself to talk to yourself, to tell you to connect to your breath. How much do you have to practice in order to be able to do this on a regular basis, especially like right before a race or? Right. I mean, you know, you can, you can do it for, five minutes, you do it for 10 minutes. It's just, it's really more of an allotment of how you're going to fit it into your, into your day, whatever that time piece is. So like I said, I could be at work in the middle of whatever crazy stuff. And I've actually taken three minutes, you know, I mean, I don't necessarily look at my watch or anything, but I can almost sense the time, you know, I, it's, it's probably just three minutes because three minutes is a long time. When you, when you start looking at a stopwatch, three minutes is a really long time. So if you even did it for three minutes, it, it happens rather quickly the more you do it. It's like anything else, it's practice. You know, if you make it a part of your day, then if you had as a, like I do it in the morning. So, so before I do anything in the morning, I have these also these um, Reiki precepts that I say, there's five things that I say every day that sort of set the tone for my day. And I give myself really only about five minutes just to sort of connect with my body. At night before I go to sleep, I do it for a little longer, but to get myself started because I'm a little rushed in the morning, <laughs> you know? I mean, life's a little hectic because I want to work out in the morning and I got to get myself dressed in the morning and I got to get out the door. And I, like all this, you start to see, feel yourself going like that. So if you actually just take the moment and say, okay, and I do it in a specific place, each time I do it, and that's sort of part of my day. So before I get from point A to point B, I stop. That's what I do, it's five minutes, and then, and then I continue. But the more you do what I found, because even these five things that I say to myself, they have changed my perspective of how I deal with people. And I can tell you what those are later because it's not a big secret. But um, it just changes your perspective on how you see things. and so. When I'm in a situation, which can be whether it's a family situation, a work situation, or whatever, my environment, I'm in traffic situation, you know, you feel yourself get very, very tense. And so it's the same thing. How do you do it? You can do it just like that in the car. Not, don't close your eyes. But in the car, you can do that where you can just absolutely just relax yourself and just breathe. And you will find that almost instantaneously as you, if you keep doing it, it'll just relax you. It's the breath. I think the breath is the real connector, you know? So um, we all sat in a chair for this, but you can do this lying down. The thing with lying down is I've, I've done that lying down. I end up falling asleep and I wake up, I wake up an hour later and say, oops, I don't think I was supposed to do that. <laughs> so I call it lying awake. Uh, you're just supposed to stay awake. That's the tricky one, though. The one where you're lying down, that to me, 
took the most practice because I would just fall asleep because I would tend to do it at night, you know, in the fall. So, um, but even so, even if you're lying down, you can do it, um, you can do what they call lying awake meditation and you can do it in what they call a corpse pose, which is that straight out, you know, straight out. Um, and you can do that in the morning. Yes, but we need to update it because we don't, we didn't have all the players, but yeah. Okay, you can do it in the morning. So you can do your lying meditation in the morning and lying, you're lying awake. Um, and that you can do that, that's fine. You can, um, when you do that, when you do the lying awake meditation, you're really doing a check-in with your whole body. So, and this can be done in a much longer phase, but the quick one when you're getting up in the morning because we don't have much time, is you do a quick check-in from head to toe. You just kind of check in with your body. So you're moving from your, your head. The jaw is a big deal because we tend to tense our jaws without even knowing we're tensing our jaws. Um, and so if you're trying to relax your muscles from your head down through your jaw um, and through your throat, because we tend to tense that too, and you move to your shoulders, because we tend to tense that too, drop your shoulders, drop your arms. If you drop your arms and you hang them down, it's just a force of relaxation, and you work it through your torso, you put the breath in, which will relax that, and then you just work through the whole rest of your body just to check in, not to do a full relaxation, but that's a check-in when you wake up in the morning, and then you get out of bed. But you've sort of awakened yourself from top to bottom to then start your day. Um, the one at night, if you do it at night, you can certainly do it much longer for a much longer time period. But if you wanted to do that in the morning, you could. Um, that's, that's, we call that a scan, um, a way of revisiting your body, but it's a discipline. It's the same thing as sports. It's a discipline. It takes practice. It takes time. You're not going to get to your, you know, to do your fastest run the first time out, you know, I mean, we do have that, that saying practice makes perfect, but we don't want to be perfect. Um, but everything does take practice. We don't, we don't, we don't learn something like that. It takes time. So it's a matter of investing the time. Um, but regardless of whatever position you choose, whatever um, time you choose, one thing also to keep in mind is to keep your hands with your palms up. You've seen that I'm sure when people meditate, their palms are sitting up on their thighs if they're cross-legged. Um, they do that. It's, it's almost a way of showing I'm willing to do this practice. It's, it's willingness. It's like I'm part of this practice. I'm giving to this practice. And you keep your hands up. I actually, I don't, I have a hard time sitting um, on the floor when I meditate, although I do, but my back starts to get sore, you know, or my hips start to get sore. And you don't want your focus to be on your body. I'm sore, I can't sit here because that becomes your whole focus and you don't want to do it because you're not comfortable. What I do, there's different ways to do it, but I take a blanket um, and I fold it up. So that's the rather, you know, it's like, we, you know, they hide. And I actually put it against my couch and I sit towards the front of the blanket, but the back of the couch, I can feel it with the back of my shoulders so I'm, I'm leaning, so it gives me some sense of support, so I don't, I'm not forcing myself to sit up. Like you've seen most people with the way they sit up when they meditate. And I don't cross my legs all the way either, because that to me is uncomfortable for me. So I'll, they'll be a little further out, or I'll have them straight out sometimes. Um, if I'm lying down, I'll bend my knees. So whatever position is comfortable for you, there's no right or wrong. Whatever position is, feels comfortable and right for you, to be able to do a practice, then that's what you choose to do. Um, so I was talking briefly about stress and, um, and trying to relieve stress. And um, everyone says, I need to, I need to de-stress. I need to get rid of all the stress. The thing is we can't get rid of the stress because it's around us. And most often it's 
things that we can't control, but the only thing we can control, like I said before, is ourselves. So we are the ones who actually create the de-stress by doing this practice and by incorporating this practice in your day, you can let it all go and you can de-stress. So we breathe and we reboot ourselves. Um, you can do it in a moment's time. You can, any place you want, but the meditation becomes your medicine. So you don't need to take Tylenol. You don't need to take a sleeping pill. You, you might want to take, you know, you might have to take something, you know, at one point, but as a daily, as a daily basis, you don't have to pop Tylenol. You don't have to take a sleeping pill. All of these things, if you practice, it becomes your, your, your form of medicine um, of the moment anyway. Anybody have any questions so far? Yeah, Jody, I have a question. Yes. Um, what, you're, what you're talking about reminds me a lot of other breathing exercises that are found in like yoga or Tai Chi. Um, but they, they also, while you're doing the movements, they're also emphasizing breathing as well, which I found very helpful, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm in a race, because I focus on trying to breathe, you know, easily instead of, you know, <laughs> you know, really hunched up. Uh, is there any advice that you can offer for while you're actually in a race? I know, you know, that this is great for getting into a relaxed state of mind prior to the race, but while you're in a race, do you have some advice on, you know, connecting to your breathing I so that you could stay in that kind of relaxed state? I think a piece of that is what I've spoken before about not putting so much emphasis on the end game. Mm -hmm. um, I think that creates um, an internal stress that we may not even be aware of because we're pushing towards something. I mean, it's, it's natural, it's what we do. We, you know, we want to succeed in that task. But if you um, can separate a little bit from I have to, I have to, I have to, or I should have, I should have, I should have, all those like the shoulda, coulda, woulda things. Um, if you can separate from that and then focus on your breath, and what they say, I was like, breathe through your nose, out through your mouth, right? If you can separate from the, I should, I should, I should, I could, I could, what all, you know, those things, it'll, it'll bring you back so that you don't find yourself gasping. Although, look, if we're pushing ourselves, we're going to be gasping for air, you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. part of you know, Ray brings up a good point because I see a lot of people in the water hyperventilating because they're so nervous and stressed out. Like that is just a common thing among triathletes, right? So how do you how do you take that? breath and calm it down right and i think it, it you it's a learning process it's a practice you have to practice it so you could be anywhere you are like i was saying you could be in your car if you can just practice letting from top to bottom kind of letting everything go and connecting to your breath it becomes part of who you are yeah. it natural it's like brushing your teeth in the morning you know you kind of just do it becomes part of who you are. Um, yeah. yeah, but I think if Jody's right, Hillary, is if if you focus on the process and just like what I found helped me a lot in the last year is I've just focused on when I'm doing a long swim, getting into a rhythm. I don't focus on the time. I just try to get into a rhythm. I just try to stay relaxed while I'm breathing. And that by itself has helped me a lot, you know? And as a result, I feel, you know, I don't think I'm necessarily faster, but I'm definitely, I finish, you know, a long swim with a lot less effort. And how long did it take you to be able to do that? <laughs> like six months to a year. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you really have to practice it. It doesn't happen, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. Look, Hillary, I knew nothing about that walk run method, right? I knew nothing. It took it took it still takes practice. But I actually gained, right? I gained 
the speed, have gained the ability to do more, but because when Ray keeps that time or you keep that time, that that's almost like a breath. You know, that's almost like a form of focus and relaxation. It's like run, walk, you know, it's just, that's all I'm thinking about. Yeah, it does. I, I, I agree. I think also with the swimming, it makes it a little easier because you do have to focus on your breath. I think for me, I probably spend the most time huffing and puffing. Well, I guess during the run walk, but also on the bike mm. when I'm pushing it, you know? And so why are you pushing it? What are you pushing? What, what am I pushing? <laughs> Cause I got to get my slow butt into gear. <laughs> And you're pushing for there's a goal there, right? Right. So if it's like people say live in the moment, you know, I mean it's really hard to do that. But if you if you weren't so focused on the goal and you focus more on the pedaling and a rhythm of that, I don't know. It's a version of what Ray said. We focus on the rhythm. So a few takeaways, you find a place um, in your home or wherever, For the this is for a formal practice because there's a formal practice that you would do every day. And then there's these informal practices that you can pull on whenever you need them. Right? So there's two different things. But the formal practice is you find a place in your house. It's usually best to have the same place because it becomes part of your routine. Um, whether it's a chair, you're sitting on the, however you decide to do it, just find that place and then that's where you go that's your practice place every day okay um it's good to either have a mat or something softer than your floor to lie down on and it's good to have a blanket nearby because you will find that the longer time you spend meditating the cooler your body gets so everyone if you've had a yoga practice at the end you know and all of a sudden you're you get cold because you're in this really relaxed state. Your body just cools down. So sometimes it's good to have a blanket nearby. Um, your lying down meditations can be done in bed, but they can also be done anywhere. Just remember it's full of weight. And um, sitting meditation, your choice. A straight back chair um, on a cushion, a blanket like I do it, however makes you feel comfortable. And in an informal practice, wherever you feel you can become mindful of yourself and remove yourself from your surroundings for a few minutes, um, you try and focus on that. Um, sometimes I find I, I visualize something. So when something's becoming very stressful or someone's becoming very stressful, I tend to, I almost put like I cover myself. I actually visualize myself being covered by this, like a white light, like a, just a white, like a sheer thing. Just, and it just makes me, I feel like, okay, I can, I can relax this in there. It's all these little things, you, you know, it's actually part of a Reiki thing. But yeah. Um, so you can try that. I have one more meditation if you wanted to. It's, it's guided, it's really guided. It's called the color relaxation meditation. Up to you if you want to do it or not. Um, I don't know what your timing is on for, um, for the remainder of this webinar. You want to go for go it? Go for it. One? Okay. Jody, you're on mute. I know I was trying to eliminate some background noise. One, one second. Okay, we're ready. Okay. So, like I said again, when I start, it'll be one chime. 
and when I end, it'll be three, okay? So to begin, make yourself comfortable, however you choose to. Adjust any of your clothing. Assume a comfortable position. And before we begin the calming color relaxation, I want you to notice how your body feels in this very moment. Passively pay attention to the state of your body right now. Do not try to change anything. Simply notice how your body and your mind feel. Feel your body begin to relax slightly as your shoulders drop a little lower, your jaw loosens so your teeth are not touching and your eyelids start to feel heavy. Take a deep breath in and out like the waves, in and out. Notice your breathing. Your body knows how much air it needs. Notice with interest how your breath goes in and out. Feel the pause after you inhale and before you exhale. Waves in and out. Allow the relaxation to occur naturally Allow and observe. Create a picture in your mind of the color red. Imagine red of all shades. You might picture red objects, a red landscape, or just a solid color red. Imagine all different tones of red Roses, bricks, apples, sunsets. Enjoy the color red. Now allow the color you are imagining to change to orange. Picture the color orange, infinite shades of orange, flowers, pumpkins, carrots, Fill your entire visual field of your mind's eye with the color orange and enjoy the color orange. Visualize the color yellow. See in your imagination all the various shades of yellow. Allow yellow to fill your vision lemons, flowers, fall leaves. Imagine the endless tones of the color yellow. Imagine yourself surrounded with the calming color yellow. Immerse yourself and enjoy that color yellow. Let that color you are imagining become green. Fill your imagination with the color green. Endless shades and tones of green. Plants, leaves, grass. Imagine being surrounded by beautiful green. All shades from the lightest to the darkest, bright green, subdued green. Enjoy green. Now see in your mind the color blue. Surround yourself with beautiful blue, unending shades of blue, water, sky. Imagine blue filling your vision. Enjoy the color blue. Now allow that color in your imagination to become violet. Focus on the multitude of purples around you. Flowers, eggplant, sunrise. Immerse yourself in the color violet and enjoy that color. 
Now allow your attention to return to your breathing. Notice how calm and regular your breathing is now. Meditate on the calming color relaxation once more. Imagine the colors again, one at a time, starting with red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Now picture whatever calming color you wish. Do you have a favorite? Or a color that suits your mood right now? Imagine whatever colors you like and allow your mind to be relaxed, focused, and calm. Enjoy the feeling of relaxation you are experiencing. And now, it is time to return your attention to your regular activities. Become more alert with each breath you take. Make yourself aware of your surroundings, stretch your muscles, Open your eyes, become fully alert, and hopefully you're calm. Thank you, Jody. This was wonderful. Everybody feel a little calm and rested, I hope. So you can do, you, I mean, I, you know, but you could focus even in, in a meditation, you could focus on a color. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions? No. No. Well, thank you very, very much. I think we all appreciate that. And I think we'll take this with us to the next training or event. <laughs> <laughs>